the new Range Rover is here. And the question we're asking is whether this is the best SUV in the world, the best car in the world. And no better way to find out than to introduce it to the best car in the world, the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Welcome to Evo India. And before we go ahead in this luxury shootout, let us know what you think of both these cars. And of course, if you enjoy this video, give us a thumbs up, share this video with like-minded enthusiasts, and don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay notified for our video drops and stay subscribed to the Evo India channel. What do you think on the styling? I think the Range Rover, my God, just look at it. It looks unbelievable. The road presence, immense, immense. If I had to use only one word to describe the whole driving experience of the Range Rover, it would be magnificent. This is incredible. You sit so high up now normally in a car. I like to sit nice and low, feel at one with the car or even with the SUV. But in a Range Rover, you sit high up and the view that you get out of there unbelievable they call this the throne driving position and it does feel like you're sitting on a throne and surveying your lands all around you the sense of occasion that you get behind the wheel of the range rover is unparalleled in the automotive universe maybe the cullinan will give you a similar kind of sensation apart from that nothing else you can see the edges of the bonnet the view is incredible the visibility is fantastic you can rest your left elbow on the center console, your right elbow on the door pad and you make imperious progress. My word, the earlier Range Rover also had this fantastic driving position. The new one, it just takes it up a notch. I love it. It's not sporty, it's not enthusiastic, yet it is just so engaging, so enjoyable. There is a joy to be had in motoring at 6 tenths, 7 tenths, behind the wheel of a Range Rover, gently loping ride, gently scythe through the corners. Oh, brilliant. Of course, all Range Rover long wheelbase owners will be enjoying the space and the comfort at the back and we will come to that in a bit. This is the long wheelbase autobiography. But honestly, they'll be missing out on this and that's a crying shame. Lucky drivers those folks have. And even though this is the long wheelbase Range Rover, doesn't feel cumbersome to be honest. Okay, it does feel like a really big automobile, but that's where the magic of rear wheel steer comes in. So at low speeds, like what I'm doing right now, the rear wheels, they turn up to seven degrees in the opposite direction to the fronts. So it reduces the turning circle. And in fact, reduces the turning circle so much that it's almost the same as a Mahindra XUV 300. This massive long wheelbase Range Rover has the turning circle of a compact SUV. And I'm not just making that up or pulling figures out of the top of my hat. Just look at it. We have one for comparison. And just look at the way the Range Rover, it makes a U-turn in the same distance as the XUV 300. That's incredible. And so going around these narrow mountain roads, it feels so easy to drive. It's also got really good steering. So accurate, so precise. You can drive it absolutely to the edge of the road, millimeter precision without a problem. And you're not constantly correcting on the steering. It's just so precise, so stable, so planted. The pace that the Range Rover is doing down these roads, now you don't feel like you're driving a sports car or you're going around corners at a million miles an hour, but you're actually carrying pretty serious speeds. The platform of this new Range Rover is all new. 80% aluminum with steel rings around it for extra bracing. The wheelbase, it has increased by 75 millimeters compared to the earlier Range Rover. And of course, this long wheelbase adds a further 200 millimeters to the wheelbase, stretching it out to 3.2 meters. 3.2 meters! That's how long the wheelbase of the long wheelbase Range Rover is. 5.2 meters in length. The width, 
2.2 meters. This is the widest car that you can get. Look at the space. It's enormous. I can't even reach out and touch the GoPro. I have to unbuckle and then reach out. It's huge. The width is massive. And the sense of space that you get. Unparalleled. Throw in a couple of lakhs over the 3.16 crore sticker price of the Range Rover. And you can also get a third row of seats in the long wheelbase Range Rover. So you can stick in your, I don't know, security guards or the house help. Stick them in into the third row. And in the middle row, the space. I will stop and I'll show you that. The space, the luxury, the fittings, the furnishings is just incredible. So both the rear passengers, they get their own screens. You can connect via HDMI ports, your Netflix or whatever, Amazon Fire Stick. And you have your own headphones. So you can listen to your shows, your music, whatever. Press the button on the center, this armrest. And the armrest, it electrically drops down. And it's got a screen integrated out here. So you slide it to open. Let's start with the seats. So both the seats have massage and you can set it in different massage modes. So I'll stick it in the combination massage and do it in the rolling massage direction. You can even heat it if you want, but uh, I'm not going to heat it. I'm going to keep it ventilated. Then you can adjust it. So at one touch, press that recline button and the front seats, they slide ahead. The rear, my seat back has reclined. There's an ottoman that's dropping down from the back of the front seat. My under thigh support has extended. My calf support is extending. And now the space, I'm five foot nine inches. And even for me, there's more than enough space. In fact, my feet barely touch that footrest. There's just so much of space out here. And all the fittings, the furnishings, like for instance, the grab rail. It's this leather kind of grab rail, which feeds like a really upmarket piece of luggage. You have blinds for the windows. You can electrically deploy the cover for the panoramic sunroof. This is really cool. Electrically, the headrest of this centerpiece, it moves ahead. And then you push this plastic tray and that reveals the cup holders where you can stick in your Starbucks coffee. It really is cool. Only thing, you don't have a mirror here. So when you get to office, you pull out a Range Rover branded mirror, do your hair and then jump out for your board meeting. So cool. This screams money, 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 money. Of course, it also costs a lot of money, but that's another thing. Now we have to talk about these interiors and everything is new. So 13.1 inch infotainment screen, a proper touch screen. Below that you have the physical controls for the climate control and you have your terrain response mode button out here. But everything else is on the infotainment. It's got a nice menu system, the colors. It's actually very stylish. Everything is very, very stylish on this car. So the way everything is laid out on the infotainment is nice. And it also highlights the fact that this is a proper 4x4, which can do crazy 4x4 stuff. We won't do that because it is frankly ridiculous to be putting a 3.16 crore SUV through mud trails. And it's got 22 inch tires. You cut a 22 inch tire and the bills that you're looking at, I don't even want to think about it. So anyway, you can do all of that. You can wade through water. The suspension, it rises by 135 millimeters. So when you stop, the suspension goes down. It actually makes a kind of push sound that sounds a bit like a bus. That sound, I think they should have cut that out. That's not really nice and refined. But anyway, when you stop, the suspension lowers. It doesn't lower as fast as the 8. The 8 also does that where the body rises. Here, the body goes down because you need to be able to walk out of the car. Otherwise, you'll be jumping out of the car. You can raise the suspension if the roads are bad. But honestly, the ground clearance is so good that you will never really need to raise 
the suspension unless you're going off road which coming back to what i said i don't know it's crazy to even think about going off roading in a range rover the rest of the cabin let's get back to the business at hand another big digital screen in front of you for your speedometer a lot of nice graphics out there the nav is integrated out there the displays change when you change the mode so in dynamic you get a red hue and the tachometer going across so it's actually done very nicely again very stylish you got i think 35 speakers in here including speakers in the headrest which are noise cancelling speakers so it isolates you from the outside world you get a huge panoramic sunroof nice soft leathers everything is beautiful but again perspective there are bits of places where you feel that the plastic quality isn't that great for instance this meridian tweeter out here the plastic not so nice the plastic for the hazards here that's not so nice so there is a bit of contrast small little places and basically this is me being a bit critical nobody really is going to notice all of this and overall it's a fabulous place to be as standard the range rover gets air suspension and also 48 volt architecture with the active anti roll bars so the anti roll bars they couple and decouple instantly depending on the conditions and that gives it actually really good pace around these roads very good grip body control is actually very good of course there is a lot of body roll and you're sitting so high up so that little bit exaggerates the sensation of body roll but it's not a handful nowhere close these tight corners it's surprising how easily it goes around these corners and how fast it goes around these corners the ride comfort has always been a big usp of all range rovers and it continues on this new one the way it goes over these roads just flattens everything in its path it feels like a heavy car mashing the road into submission It really is fabulously comfortable. The seats are damn comfortable. And you get this nice gently loping ride that doesn't make you sick. It just gives you this sensation of being in a big luxurious car that can chew miles like almost nothing else that you can get your hands on. Like nothing else money can buy. But that said, we have perspective that's why the s class is here on this test to give us perspective and when you drive the range rover and the s class back to back that's when you realize the right comfort on the range rover is still not as good as the s class the s class truly has that magic carpet ride which the range rover mm, and especially over sharper bumps sharper cracks in the road the small bumps it just flattens it all but the sharper little larger bumps that is surprisingly evident inside the cabin out of thought that all would be isolated but mm, you can feel a bit of it and you can feel a bit of that jiggle and shimmy when you go over those bad patches you actually get a thump from the suspension and that's telling you to just take it a bit easy over the sharper bumps get on the highway though and the straight line stability is insane the sight lines are brilliant so you can place it with accuracy and it just chugs and chews up the miles like nobody's business i have to point out like over those kind of corners those tight corners normally big suvs they feel really cumbersome but the range rover doesn't not even close the engineering that has gone into this new chassis it's commendable it's really commendable and if you're in the mood for more corner carving you have the terrain response too that also has a dynamic mode so you stick it into dynamic mode you can use the controller out here or use the touch screen and in dynamic mode obviously everything firms up you can't feel the suspension has become stiffer the small bumps that earlier were completely flattened out you can feel a bit more of those but round bends the body control is better the body roll is slightly less and it does feel a bit more enthusiastic but honestly this isn't the way to drive a range rover barreling through corners best is just keep it in the auto mode it will decide what it requires and you enjoy the drive should we talk about prices come on let's go down that road 
the earlier Range Rover, the long wheelbase Range Rover. In fact, four years ago, we did a similar kind of story with the then long wheelbase Range Rover, with the then long wheelbase S-Class. Today, we have new generations of both. Back then, four years ago, the long wheelbase Range Rover was 2.2 crores. Now, it has gone up by one crore. That is a lot of money. Of course, the S-Class has also gone up by a significant sum. But 1.6 crores for the S-Class, 3.16 crores for this Range Rover. That price differential is mad. But for perspective, let's jump into the S-Class and talk about the interiors out there. The Mercedes-Benz S-Class, truly the best car in the world. And this latest generation, it just takes things up a notch in terms of luxury, in terms of refinement, in terms of the tech on it. This, what we're driving, is the S350. Now, when the S-Class was launched, the very first versions, the ones that came as a CBU, that also had that cool 3D effect for the digital instrument cluster. It had the Burmester 4D surround sound system which was absolutely incredible in terms of the sound output and the way that your body actually felt the bass it had all wheel drive all that has been taken out on these versions which are assembled here in india but despite that the s class it still feels extraordinary the ride comfort is something else the range rover as you would expect has excellent ride comfort but this is here for perspective right and when you drive the s class after the range rover the comfort is even better it's staggering but the s class is more comfortable the ride comfort is better it soaks in the pumps like these bad patches it soaks it in better than the range rover does truly magic carpet ride and remember, the S-Class, it does not have cameras that scans the road ahead and adjust the suspension accordingly. That's on the Maybach. This one, the regular S-Class, despite lacking all of it, it still has brilliant ride comfort. I just went over a speed breaker. Did not feel it. And then, of course, this is a car compared to the Range Rover, which is an SUV. And that just makes it so much nicer to drive. You sit lower, of course not too low, but you sit lower, you feel more engaged and involved. This does not have that throne-like driving position, which honestly, the Range Rover does much better. That driving position is actually epic. But to drive, the S-Class, it handles better, it's more involving and engaging. And of course, it is faster without trying. It just does not have to try. It just is easy on any kind of road. Whether it is open highways or these windy mountain roads, the S-Class is just superb. Now we've driven the S-Class enough, so I won't dwell too much into the way it drives. Safe to say that this too has rear axle steering, so that makes it really agile. Agile for its size, surprisingly agile for its size. The steering is lovely. The ride comfort, like I said, is phenomenal. In fact, it is better than those early launch edition cars because it has one size smaller wheels. So that higher profile of the rubber, in fact, gives it even better ride comfort. Yeah, I'm still talking about the driving dynamics, but you can't help it. Just look at the way it goes over these bumps. But what I really need to point out is the quality of the S-Class. And in comparison, there's not one area that you can point out that has plastics, which is slightly cheapy feeling also. Everything, every single thing is of a super high quality. These aircon vents, there's nothing like it. In the way this metal feels, in the way it operates, the infotainment, this feels mega techy. The digital cluster with its customizable dials, feels really really high quality the way the power window switches operate these are small little things that you would not notice but this is a back-to-back -back comparison right and the way the power window switches operate the sunroof 
the touch slide operation the metal paddle shifters behind the steering wheel everything the quality is compared to the rear quarters of the range rover the s class seems a bit more cozy it does not have that massive 3.2 meter wheelbase so you don't have this acres of space though that said again this is a matter of perspective because by any other yardstick this is incredibly spacious but the range rover well it takes things up a notch now this too has that one touch button the pause mode button where you press that and the front seat it reclines and extends all the way forward the headrest it dips now i have to point out that this is a bit of a problem for the driver because they can barely see the left wing mirror so they don't really enjoy it if you extend the seat all the way in front but you will enjoy it so the front seat it goes all the way in front my backrest it reclines this reclines actually more than the range rover the range rover doesn't recline as much the seat under thigh support is extending what's left oh, well. now my calf support is extending and then there's a little tray that deploys from under the front seat and you have this incredibly luxurious rear quarter the space actually is more in the range rover in the range rover i could barely get my feet to touch the back of the front seat but here there's a slight bend in my knee again this is all relative but yeah there's less space out here but the seat actually is more comfortable it's more cushy it's more sumptuous more plush more luxurious and the fittings this also feels of a even higher quality the screen out here this samsung tablet that i'm not a fan of that should have been done better but otherwise overall this feels more luxurious and it's i like the fact that the right comfort of the s class is better you actually notice it even more from the back seat the comfort the difference of the comfort between the range rover and the s class here road is driving and as usual he's not slowing down for a speed breaker but i can barely feel the speed breaker in the range rover you can feel all of that a bit more and then when he's going around corners it's much better when you're sitting lower down in the range rover when you're sitting so high up after a while if your driver is gunning it around corners you tend to feel a little uncomfortable your head starts to pain your stomach feels queasy but in the s class that takes even longer to actually set in this is much nicer and in the s class you also get this pillow i don't know what it is for <laughs> a throw pillow a whole pillow well <laughs> or you take it home and keep it in your bed but yeah this is very rarely do i don't want to jump out of the back seat but in an s class you don't want to jump out of the back seat oh must point out the soft pillows oh, for the win the front seats they don't have massage only the rear seats have massage only the boss is supposed to have a massage at the back but this driving position is oh. Just look at the way it goes around these corners. Of course there's a bit of that luxury car feel to it in the slightly loping gait. But it goes through these bumpy, wavy, undulating roads like nothing else. Of course you will have a legitimate question and that is why aren't we comparing the Range Rover to the GLS Maybach because that would be sort of on par in terms of pricing. This S-Class is half the price of the Range Rover. and the simple reason for that the rationale is that in our books the s class is a better car than both the gls as well as the gls maybach in the way it rides in the handling in the performance everything of course in terms of the features and the tech and all of that the maybach it does move it up a notch but this regular made in india s class assembled in india s class is perfect for the price the comfort the luxury the badge value whatever you get on the s class is just super super high quality 
The S class might be 50 bhp down on the Range Rover, but it is much lighter and of course has got better aerodynamics, so it is faster. And because it is rear wheel drive, so there is a bit of enthusiasm to the way it corners. I know these are crazy things to be talking about in a luxury car. All luxury car owners are going to be sitting at the back and lavishing in those massive back seats. But this is the Evo India channel. We are all about the thrill of driving. And if you like to hustle your luxury cars, the S-Class does it really, really well. Better than the Range Rover for sure. The Range Rover, of course, has the versatility of four-wheel drive. So if the roads get really bad, if you have to detour through a field, if the national highway is clogged, the Range Rover will do that. The S-Class, it will not do that. So we have to be upfront about that fact. The S-Class, it seriously sets the standard for which every other automobile manufacturer aspires to. It previews technologies that filtered down into the more mass market cars over the years. The question is, would you spend twice as much on a Range Rover? Well, the other question is, if you can spend twice as much, why not go for the Range Rover? It looks brilliant, it rides really well, that whole sense of occasion that it gives you behind the wheel is phenomenal. But end of the day, the S-Class is still the best car in the world.